All right. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. Um, we are so excited to have our special guest on today. His name's Michael. He's also a friend of mine. I really appreciate you coming on the, today's show. And uh, I'm so excited to get into kind of the details of uh, the way you grew up and what you're doing now and what you have done in the past as well and what's about to be released, Yeah, what you're working on. Um, so without uh, getting more into what you're doing, if you want to just share a little bit about what it was like growing up the way that you grew up, because um, as you'll find out, Michael is an actor, and that is so different from the way I grew up. And so I'm super interested in learning more about what it was like growing up the way that you grew up and how you got into acting. Definitely. Uh, um, first off, thank you for having me on your podcast, The Amish Rebel. Um, man, I, I'm. it's just an honor to be on your podcast, you man. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. We're yeah. Glad to have you. Um, so, how I grew up. Uh, so, I grew up in Dallas, Texas, a pretty normal life. Um, I grew up, uh, I have a twin brother, have a younger sister. Mom and dad are that's together, and they've stayed together the whole time, so that's great. Um, yeah, to me, it just seemed like such a, a normal life. Like, we went to church every Sunday and Wednesday. My grandfather was a uh, pastor of a church in Dallas. Oh, wow. For... Uh, decades, and so I have a, a pretty deep history in um, just like church and Christianity and, and things like that. It yeah. runs deep in the family. So, um, in fact, for a while before I got into acting, I thought I was going to be a a pastor because I was really close with my grandpa who was no a pastor. Way. So I literally thought um, I was either going to be a youth pastor or just like a normal okay. pastor or something. So I thought I was going to go do that, um, and so that's that's interesting. But, um. Yeah, we moved out to the suburbs of Dallas when I was like six, and I went. Okay. I grew up going to um, private schools, uh, private Christian schools. Oh, the education okay. was usually really great at these schools, and so like I super appreciate my parents for putting me in those schools. I definitely felt like I had a leg up with my linguistic skills, um, and I, I don't know the the academics um, I was able to be a part of was really beneficial to me as a elementary school student up to high school so yeah uh, school was cool man I almost don't know what else to say because I'm just it just seems so normal to me I went to church I went to school (laughs) (laughs) so but you but you grew up I mean you grew up in the city right or suburbs Uh, or you could say I grew up in the suburbs most of my formative years yeah but in Dallas I mean in Dallas that's like growing up in the city because we live, I guess, compared to what you're used to, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I was getting. At. Like, if the way I grew up, I mean, I grew up super rural, so like way outside the city. I mean, like two hours from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. So, it, I mean, Rochester is about an hour, forty-five minutes to an hour away. So, it's the closest okay. Walmart. So we were way out in the sticks, dude. Um, yeah, there's just nothing around, but. And we we had people come see us from the city, okay. and it's just such a different life. Uh, even Man. even living where we live now, like we live in the country, but uh, people that live in the country country think we live in the city. If that makes sense, it does make Cause, sense because you're still you're not terribly far from Fort Worth. No, so no. Uh, even though you're in the country, it's like you outside of Fort Worth, even just a mile you could call that the country yeah and so yeah. it's like i could walk for 10 minutes down 30 west and i would feel like i'm in the country yeah. <laughs> so yeah 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 the city is put together a little bit different here in dallas fort worth i feel like in it's put together a little bit different than a lot of cities where there's still a lot of open land within the city i mean there's people that have cattle within the city yeah and you don't normally see that yeah um so you grew up with a twin brother any any other siblings yeah i have a younger sister um she's just a year a year and a half younger so we're all quite close in age oh okay and how old are you now 35 35 
And you're are you dating currently? Um, I'm not seeing anyone at the moment, so I'm single. But uh, I mean, I guess I am dating. I mean, I have a social life, and so I'm meeting women. Just I guess as anyone does usually. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you're looking. If somebody's oh, yeah. listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, you grew up. So how did you, you grew up in church. Mm-hmm. Your, you said your grandpa was a pastor? Yes. What what church was he, or what what uh, denomination, I guess? He was pastor? an Assemblies of God denomination of God. pastor. Okay. Yeah. Because you, you and I met, and this is kind of jumping forward, but. Um, you and I met at Gateway, right? Yeah. Or through Gateway. Yeah. So shout out to Pastor Dustin. Yeah, Pastor <laughs> Dustin, bro. But I I wanted to, so as a kid, did you always aspire to go into acting? No, man. Um, As a kid, I was into a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I was a soccer player primarily growing oh, up. Oh, okay. So soccer, Um, but uh, I was like, uh, I was into like everything, building Legos, playing video games. I was super into Star Wars. Okay. Um, so, and that's interesting because one of my goals I realized when I started acting was like, I would love to play a Jedi in a Star Wars project. And so maybe down the line, mm. that's something that can take place. Um, and so I was so moved by, um, inspirational stories like i'll tell you my two favorite films of all time and their trilogies so the original star wars trilogies trilogy and the lord of the rings trilogy oh um so i took a lot of influence uh i guess from those strong leading male characters in those stories so um i was like i either want to be a jedi once in my life uh or something like aragorn my favorite hero i think Mm. of all time so that's awesome. Yeah. So you will be one. I will In be. In fact, one. <laughs> you got to play a part. <laughs> maybe not that big of a role or maybe not as big of a role. We we have yet to see that, right? right. So uh that's super exciting. But how did how did you get into acting then? If okay, you were, so so if you were just a normal kid growing up in somewhat of a normal environment, right? Yes. Yeah. How did the acting come about? So, um, I had some friends who were doing some, I guess, uh, TV work. Um, here they were like Dallas based teen actors. Um, so like specifically, there's uh, the band Big Time Rush. There's a, a okay. guy named Logan Henderson. And my twin brother and he were in a band in uh, middle school, high school. And so oh, wow. Logan was doing some stuff on like, uh, I think it was, uh, I, I want to say Disney Channel or something. And there were a couple more people locally that I knew at an acting studio that were like teenage actors who were doing disney channel stuff or nickelodeon work Mm. and i was like ah man that's so cool because i was doing musical theater in high school i did the sound of music i did fiddler on the roof and uh my fair lady those are amazing all of those were so cool and so i was already doing theater in high school while doing varsity basketball while doing soccer while doing music super involved in that too and so being a drummer um that was that was my passion um, in high school and college was just like drumming, man. I thought I was going to become wow. a touring drummer. So I guess my dreams were like, I'm going to be a pastor. And then it was like, no, nah, I'm going to be a, a touring drummer. And, <laughs> um, awesome. and then it was like acting. And so here's what actually happened is I was doing all of those things. I just said kind of simultaneously throughout high school and college. Mm-hmm. And I saw my friends who were doing the film acting. And so I started a class here in Dallas. I got signed to the Kim Dawson agency and, um, started going on auditions when I turned 18 and started college. And um, acting was just the thing that gave me the biggest opportunity the soonest. Um, oh, okay. So that's why I decided to pursue acting over music or over a higher level of soccer. Um, so, yeah, um, I was just auditioning um, through the Kim Dawson Agency in college and... Um, while going to college and getting 
a, uh, a finance degree. I was pre-med first, and then I decided to swap over to, to finance. Oh, okay. So I kind of swapped around a little bit there, but... Uh, gotcha. Yeah, so that's how I got into acting. That's um, I just saw some friends who were doing it. I was doing musical theater, so it made sense. Let me try the film side, not the theater side of acting. Mm -hmm. So I just joined an agency. And again, it was just like one of eight to ten things I was doing. And I cared about all of them about equally. And acting gotcha. just kind of was the thing that took yeah. off first. Took off, yeah. yeah. Gave you an opportunity. and Gave know. me an opportunity. So, yeah. but you you signed with an agency. What does that mean? Like what, what goes into you finding an agency and signing with an agency? Because a lot of people listening mm -hmm. um, may not know what that is. Yes. Including myself. So... I don't know. If you want access to the best roles um, and you do not have a personal relationship with directors or producers, um, gotcha. you have you usually go through the route of getting an agent and agents submit you as an actor, as talent, to roles that are being cast. Oh, um, yeah. And then that's just the normal thing you do if you're a film actor. You find an agent or a manager. They submit you. Um, they search out on their database like what roles are available and which of those roles you look like you fit. Mm. And then they will match you and submit and the casting director will say, yeah, we'll see your actor. And then they will send you the sides or the lines, the scene that you'll then tape and send to the casting wow. director. And then they pick their top three to five, whatever actors for callbacks or however big that is. And then they um, narrow it down to who they pick. Hmm. So, so it's sort of like this whole process of of you getting you actually getting a role on a on a TV show mm -hmm. or a movie or yeah. whatever the case may be. So, how did you get on to? Because so then you had an agency and you were yeah. you were auditioning. You were mm -hmm. just going out and do you get paid for auditions? No, that's. Okay, so you don't get paid for auditions, but you're putting in a lot of work. I wish actors got paid to audition because yeah. it's like you're uh, – it, it takes a lot of prep and energy and, and time, and I think actors should get paid somehow for auditioning, but you don't. Gotcha. So you're – So you just kind of eat – you just eat that that's a cost of doing business. Yeah. Um. Just like sales, you, you kind of have to, if you're, it's like being 100% commission. It's mm. like you have to go pitch yourself for whatever you're selling and you don't get paid until you book something. Gotcha. So you're going and you're, you're playing this role to see if you get the main role or yeah. see if you get the, yes. the part. In it's the, like you're trying it on for size yeah. uh, for the casting director and the director and producers who will make the final casting decision. Gotcha. Do you do you have some stories of some some good auditions and then some that weren't so great? Oh man, yeah. Like I <laughs> I have some what's crazy about auditioning is, and like so many actors bring this up, is like the ones you don't care about are the ones you usually like effortlessly book. Oh wow. Um I've paid for high level coaching. I've uh I've not paid for coaching. I have uh, tried to be off book for like every audition and then I've just like read lines off the paper. It's like there's really no one way to figure out how to get booked. I've booked doing each of these methods mm. so of approach gotcha. and um, and so uh, wait now, okay, what did you just ask me? I forgot. I, I asked like s some good experience. Yeah, okay, so audition and some oh bad man, experience. dude, I do not even want to bring up the bad experiences I had because they were just so embarrassing. Um, That's all good. Yeah, there's we're, this, we're real okay, okay, here. noob, here's a noob <laughs> actor story. I had, um, this was when I first moved to LA and uh, I signed with um, Innovative Artists, which is a, um, a bigger agency and that was amazing and um, I was just swamped. I was doing like four or five, six auditions a week for months on end during pilot season, which was great. And there was this one audition. Bro, I did not have professional training in high school. No one really taught me like the technique of how to audition or. Yeah. So like there's ugh, something I hate that casting directors do. You guys need to change this um, is. <laughs> Like they will leave stuff in the scene that are like physical cues. And so they tell you when to start, when to end, 
And um, sometimes the end mark will be after a bunch of action, but you have to stay here because the camera's right there. You can't mm. you can't actually kiss that actress. You can't go because there's no one actually there. And so it just I quickly learned that those are things you just don't include in your audition. Oh, um, wow. but I that was just me like fresh off the block. Yeah. I didn't know what to yeah, do. Absolutely, like no I one mean, tells you this it's stuff. Your script, right? It was in the script. Yeah. And so um, there were a couple more embarrassing auditions where I just did not fit the character. Mm. And um, I had a manager who like um, would really pressure me to go uh, to some auditions that just didn't feel right for me. Um, like the role was sort of like morally compromising. And, oh, um, okay. and so I just had to learn through that. Every actor goes through that, like what your boundaries are yeah. and what you're not willing to do on screen. And so yeah. I had a personal meeting with um, the Stars Network um, for an audition for a show um, for a character that just just didn't align with like my belief system. But I, my manager like pressured me to do it. I, I just did it to make him happy. And bro, I um, <clears throat> it just was so awkward, man. Um, mm. So again, you learn over time as an actor what you tolerate, what you say no to. I guess that's what it, really you learn. You learn yeah. how to say no. Yeah. You learn that you will disappoint um, your reps sometimes because they work hard to get actors' opportunities. Yeah, I bet. But I um, bet sometimes you... I was just going to say, I bet that's like... I bet that's a really tough job to have is to get, get those roles and get the yeah. actors to agree to them. Yeah. Um, most actors do anything you ask them to do. Because they need work. And um, a lot of uh, people don't have like the same moral boundaries that I guess I have growing up the way I did. And yeah. so it was a learning experience for me. So I loosened up on some things I was pretty strict on and just found my comfort zone and where I could kind of stretch it and still feel like myself. Yeah. Uh, like I was bringing something authentic. So uh, I've also had some really amazing, amazing auditions, some effortless, beautiful scenes. Um, that just like changed me as an actor. And that's what I think we're all in the game for is just that cathartic feeling you get. And when you're seen, um, just things happen that you didn't expect that are not written between the lines or in the lines or yeah. even said in the lines. When you as an actor make a beautiful scene with other actors, it just feels like nothing else. It's so cool. Um, and so I have plenty more of those amazing experiences than like yeah. embarrassing experiences. That's great. So it's like you get a mixed bag. That's great. And that's, that's something that I love about you. Well, there's a few things that I want to highlight. And that is your character <laughs> okay. and the, and the fact that you actually, you actually recognize and you know, um, what you stand for and what you want, the roles that you want to play and the roles you don't want to play. Cause like you said, there's a lot of actors that don't have that they will just compromise their personal beliefs for an opportunity yeah and that's that speaks volumes about you but also Thanks, uh, please comment if you think michael is a great actor and if you'd like to see more of him in films <laughs> because i believe he's an awesome actor thank you and um i'm excited to see the project that you're telling me about which we'll talk more about um, later on in the episode, but Sweet. so tell us, um, what does it look like when you get on scene? Like mm -hmm. when you get the role, you get on scene, you go out to make a film. Like, is it, yeah. are you working all day long to shoot or is it like a quick shoot and you're out of there? It depends on, <laughs> I've had some really quick scenes and we're done within an hour. Most of the time though, you're waiting for five, six, seven hours to do just like one scene sometimes. It mm -hmm. depends on, the shooting conditions, it depends on how big your role is. Um, if you're the lead actor uh, or one of the several lead actors um, in a movie or a show, you're you're having 14-hour work days because um, wow. your character's in that much of the content. And gotcha. So, um, I've had 14 to 16-hour work days, and I've had um, work days where I would show up for like a, a three-minute scene, but I had to get there five hours early for some reason. And filming usually mm. gets delayed, and so that's why it turns into such a long wait. Um, wow. So the amount of time you spend on set, it just varies. It depends on your character. Is it um, is it just a co-star, a recurring, or is it a series regular? Is it yeah. A, 
a higher up recurring. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I would love to try out acting sometime. I think it would be fun. Like, I, <laughs> just just listening to you and seeing what you've gone through. What What are some things that you've learned personally about yourself uh, being doing the acting career like i mean you've you mentioned that you've hired personal coaches and that you've you've had to develop yourself over the years what do you feel like are some things that Hmm. you've that you've learned about yourself um man there's so much just like just what comes to mind is like how to not waste time when you're doing something that matters to you like auditioning can and, and acting can lead you in so many different ways and directions it takes a lot of your money and so it's just I think I wasted a lot of time when I was living in LA auditioning all the time because I didn't properly know how to like prep and so I don't know like how you use your time matters um I learned I learned again like what um what boundaries I needed to have Mm. Um, and which boundaries I came into the game with that were a little too much. Like I didn't need that boundary there. It was yeah. just me being, I don't know. Um, that's such a deep question. It's such a it's such a, yeah, a broad I'm, reaching I'm, question. I'm like what did I learn put, about myself? Yeah, I'm not um, trying to put you on the spot either. I mean, we can we can move into how did you get to L.A. Because you said you grew up in Texas. You're back in Texas. Yeah, and at some point in time you end up going to LA, LA for a yeah. while. Yeah. Um, how how did that take place? All right. So, um I was uh booked on Teen Wolf uh for a um it was originally just a guest star that turned into a recurring um a multi-season mm. recurring. And so um yeah, like I'm trying to picture so that was like mid to late college for me. And, um, so I went and filmed that in Atlanta, Georgia, and I came back to, to continue doing college. And then the show and my character got a lot of attention and, and traction. Mm. And so I was getting offers to, um, read and basically like skip the casting line for some other big movies that were happening around that time. Teen Wolf season two and season three was happening. Okay. And so I ended up getting some attention from some agents out in LA and I decided to sign with one of them and I um, picked up and moved to LA. I didn't finish college at that time. And so went and signed with a big agency and um, in 2014 moved to LA and started auditioning during my first ever pilot season. Wow. So yeah. So Teen Wolf, shout out to all the Teen Wolf fans. The Wolfies. So (laughs) Teen Wolf was, was, uh, that was filmed here in Dallas? No, it was filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, season one Georgia. and season two, okay. primarily. Gotcha. Then season three, I believe, is when they moved to L.A. Oh, okay. North Ridge, I believe. All so. right. So you went to L.A. for some different opportunities. You auditioned out there for... How long were you in L.A.? For? I lived in L.A. for four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was an incredible experience. Um, I will likely move back to L.A. at some point. I had such a good time living there mm. um you still have a lot of friends there i don't know where a lot of my friends are after COVID happened it just like everyone dispersed some of them are still in la but from what i know most of my friends are still in los angeles or new york city one of the two mm. so gotcha yeah um so okay so uh yeah teen wolf happened uh la happened and uh yeah, what next? What do you want to know? <laughs> then you went, I mean, you came back to Texas after four years of being in L.A. Yeah, so I was in a relationship. I um, I got engaged to a girl I met at church out there, and it was cool. We were great. We decided not to stay engaged after a while, and so it was just um, we moved back to Dallas together, um, and then we decided, you know, this probably isn't right for us, so let's um, break up. And so that kind of wrecked me for a little bit. Um, breaking off an engagement is its own kind of like emotional nuclear bomb it's it's um man you have to change like everything about your life is oriented about Mm, that person and you together with that person 
And so, yeah, like 2018 was like a total recoup year for me. And that's when we met. Like yes, shortly after that happened. Yes. Yeah. So at the end of, I guess it was the beginning, maybe towards the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I met Pastor Dustin mm -hmm. the beginning of, no, I guess in December of 2018. Okay. So maybe yeah. we met um, when our Bible study group uh, launched in 2019, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, geez. How did you end up in that group? How yeah. did you end up in the in the group that I was a part of? When I was in college, I was going to Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, um, before I moved to LA. And um, when I came back to Dallas after um, uh, LA, I just uh, continued to go to Gateway, and I somehow happened to meet Dustin Heron. Okay. And... Um, uh, who was the, at that time, I guess the, the men's pastor was his yeah, title or something. Yeah. And so, uh, he was starting a men's group. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how we got introduced when that gotcha. kicked in Yeah. Tuesday mornings at six 30, which is just why. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. That being a part of that group was, it was awesome. Probably. I mean, it, it is definitely the highlight of me moving to Texas Man. and introduced to everybody at that group. And I can agree with that too. Yeah. That was unlike any uh, friend group <clears throat> I've ever had. Yeah. Same so, here. Yeah. It was, man, all of you guys that were in our 2019 Bible study group, it was such a cool group of dudes. It, it started with like five or so of us and it grew to like 10 to 12 before yeah. everyone like it, it before it concluded but man what a cool experience that was man i'll never forget that yeah and that's that's how we met and ended up yeah we i remember finding out um because it wasn't we didn't i think most of us didn't know your background mm -hmm. until one day at at the Bible study or we're sitting down talking and you said that, yeah, you were on Teen Wolf and everybody kind of freaked out, uh, <laughs> like starstruck. And uh, I remember <clears throat> me just um, loving being around you because yeah. of how authentic you were and just Man. how expressive you are. So I appreciate I that. I know that. That's cool. I, you definitely challenged me in that area because – growing up the way I grew up was mm -hmm. like you learn you have to, you need to learn a lot about yourself I mean we didn't there is no such thing as a an acting career there's really no career except you know construction working with your hands yeah you know, stuff like that so you get to learn uh when you get out you get to learn all these new things I can imagine coming yeah. from the world that you came from like you said, so you you owned a, a company for a while, and that like you told me, I remember that you were just like working, working, working. Um, I guess a lot when you're early twenties or something, and yes, um, and so that was it, like it was really cool to see to hear about your history and how you did life because it's making more sense to me now. Like what a stark difference, I guess, in some regards, our histories are, our pasts are, yeah. um, and our professions turned out to be. Um, you know, Amish background, Hollywood actor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, so when I met you in our Bible study, I don't remember exactly what I thought, but I was just super intrigued. Could I intrigued because I had never met anyone from an Amish background. Mm. And, um, I do remember you were, um, you always had some of the, the, the best, stuff to say when we would be having discussions and um you were so so friendly and probably one of the most upbeat and happy seeming men in the group oh well i appreciate so that. like that was different in Thank such a you. cool way that's a that's a huge compliment and yeah. i i appreciate that i i just remember like <clears throat> coming from where we where we came from you know moving from ohio to texas up there, you're surrounded with Amish people. Yeah. And those are the people I knew. And so I didn't know anybody here in Texas. And we, I sit down with Pastor Dustin. I told him, um, 
that I grew up Amish, and he he just like freaked out. He's like, yeah. Dude, "You have to come to this yeah. this men's group. And I'll, I'll be there. I don't have anything else to do." Yeah. <laughs> and so, so and you guys were also inviting. Um, awesome. But yeah, it, I've I've learned a lot from each and every one of you. I I think I'm still friends with everybody. Yeah. Like, on a on a regular basis, I meet up with one of you guys from the group. So cool. So I'm Man. excited to have, I know Shelby. Yeah. Shelby's agreed to come on the podcast. Hey, so. nice. <laughs> um, Man, I thought of Shelby the other, the other week, actually, of all things. So. Yeah. Jonathan McNabb, he's, he's agreed to come on <laughs> Dude, the podcast. Jonathan has to come on the podcast. Yes, he does. Bro, that's going to be fire. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be awesome to actually have all of us in the room. That would be pretty cool. And do a podcast. Yeah, That'd we we need to get like a table and some chairs. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah, a little bigger space. But Man. what else is going on? Yeah. So, so have- um, I just finished reshoots a couple of weeks ago for a film that I'm one of the lead actors in, and that's coming out. It was produced by an independent, um, production company, um, Fountain Bridge Productions, I believe. That's what it's called. And um, there are some offers on the film right now. So we're just seeing where it's going to land um, okay. as far as a network picking it up and airing it. And so that's going to likely happen uh, twenty twenty five, early 2025 possibly. And so, um, but yeah, we just wrapped a couple weeks ago on some reshoots. And I'm very, very excited about that project. Wow. So, and that's a movie. It's right? a movie. It's a feature length film. Wow. Yeah. Dude, I am so excited for you on that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. dude. I'm both excited and nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen very little playback, but that experience, I'm positive it's going to be amazing, but beca- I've seen very little playback because I was the one of the busiest actors mm. um, on set because I just had a lot of material to be in. And so I was always like um, reading my lines and prepping for the next scene and God, eating a yeah. snack and then jumping into the next scene and all this. And so... That was filming this film. It's called Do You Remember? It was such a defining experience for me as an actor. I've mm-hmm. never had that level of responsibility being the one of the lead actors yeah. and having that much on my plate, regular 12-hour days, 14-hour days, 16-hour days, going back to the hotel and waking up early um, for more and more and more. And uh, it was just a really proving experience for me as an actor to be able to handle that workload and feel like I was nailing every scene and every take for the most part. Yeah. And so it just, it showed me, there were some scenes where I had to cry. I don't think we've kept those scenes in the final cut. Um, but I, going in, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Mm. And I don't, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to find a way to achieve these deeper emotions in these scenes um because wild yeah um these deeper emotional moments like weeping or crying often have to be at a particular moment in the scene yeah and at a particular line and it's hard to do it so spot on because you're working with a human being and with emotions that are flowing and they, they hit you when they hit you and so i um i just realized what I could do in my process to help me achieve those deeper emotions. And I love it. It, when Mm. you know that you can honor a scene, honor a story and do take after take after take, um, of something intense or crying or being happy over and over again, it's really exhausting. Here's what's exhausting about being an actor is like when you have to do every scene, like it's the first time you're doing it and it requires an arc where you start with one emotion and you finish in a different state as a mm. character emotionally, which is what makes scenes interesting. And that's what happens in real life. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, I just, I learned that I can do anything as an actor. I can hit any emotion. I can do it wow. over and over again. Um, and, uh, man it made me feel like I could stack up with the best actors um, that's cause I was just doing it every day, every day for weeks and weeks. Yeah. And I believe that. I Thanks. believe that cause I see, I see how you carry yourself from day to day. And I think it's, it's, 
the con it's the confidence that you can do it. And now that you've discovered that, I mean, it gives you confidence to do it again, right? And to do yeah. it, and to do it better and to do it I mean, we, we're always working at getting better yeah. at our craft, so we've never fully arrived, but <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I believe that. And I'm excited. I'm really excited. What was the the name of the film again? Do Just, you remember? Do you remember? Yeah, so, it, it was going through two different title selections, and they landed on that one. So do you, do you remember? remember? So be on the lookout for that. Be on the film. lookout. Yeah, I'll definitely be watching it. Definitely. Uh, There's yeah. something I want to share. Um, that was um, a defining. You asked earlier things I learned about myself, and just something yeah. that comes to mind that helped me as an actor and as a person. Um, was something I learned in my acting. Uh, class at a studio, the Perlman Acting Academy, um, PAA, LA. Um, Joseph Perlman was my coach for a while. And um, something he said that I took into that film experience, which really changed me, um, is um, to let go what you think the scene has to look like. Every time you read through a scene mm. as an actor, you automatically generate pictures and emotions that you think, oh, this is what's happening. And you think it now has, you have to play to what you just imagined. When oh. a scene can go a hundred different ways. And oftentimes you can crash a scene, make it look inauthentic and not natural if you're trying to be something. The best scenes are you come in knowing your lines and you just flow with it and you let go of what you think it should look like. Yeah. So I've been taking that to other areas of life too. What what do you think? Okay, so like my dad had to do a presentation at his work and I was helping him and coaching him in a sense on how to give a presentation because he never has to do that. Mm. And he was stressed and I could tell. Yeah. And so I told him that bit of acting advice. Um, and I was like, dad, uh, first thing I, I know I can tell you right now, it's going to you know, make you relax and free to do this um, your way, which is the best way, is let go of what you think it should like. Uh, excuse me. Let me uh, let go of what you think it should look like. Yeah. Um, okay. Because that's making you freak out right now. Oh, wow. And um, That's huge. When you have a lot of identity writing on what you do, you want it to look great. And so that can put a lot of pressure yeah. um, on you um, as a performer. Um, and so it worked. He was like, man, I feel better like already Yeah. Like, a moment after I said that to him. So, yeah. um, and that is such a, a maturing moment as an actor because the shift that happened to me was wanting to impress others. Like, um, I got to impress the director. I got to impress the producers. I have to, um, impress the audience, mm. but I'm over here working and not enjoying this because I don't know what everyone wants and everyone wants something different. Yeah, uh, and most people don't know what they're looking for um, in a scene, and they just want the actors to show up and do it. And I'm okay with that. Um, so just being free from what you think a scene or a presentation or a sales pitch should look like, should sound like, will allow the real you to step in. Yeah. Your depth of creativity, your depth of skill uh, to step in naturally and it, it was just one of the most freeing experiences i like don't care to impress anybody right now because what will be impressive is when you be a good actor and do a scene authentically yeah, in character absolutely so yeah that's that's super helpful for me because and and i can definitely identify with that because i've come on here just on the podcast yeah thinking um, I want to make sure I come across a certain way. But yeah. the most important thing to me is to be authentic on here, is to just be real, just have the real story and and for people to take what they can take and learn from whatever it is that they can learn from. But I do also, like, I'm also challenged at times with like walking in here and thinking it has to look a certain way for me to be authentic. So what you just said like yeah. hits hits like home for me. I love that. And I didn't even I didn't even really realize until you were 
putting it to words that that's what I was doing. Um, I mean, my number one <clears throat> goal is to be authentic. But then I think about the audience and I'm like, what would the audience want to hear? Like, what would the audience and then I overthink it and I'm like, I got to make sure I, you know. Yeah, no, it's exactly, the, it's exactly like what actors have to go through. It's like, what does the casting director want? I mean, what does the director <laughs> yeah. want? What do the executives want me to look yeah. like so they pick me? Mm. And it's like all the things you cannot control are the things you were trying to control for, which we shouldn't. Oh, wow. So the best thing you can do is acknowledge that that's the frame they – that's just the context they're looking for a character within. Um, so, and you bring what you bring, and if it's something they have a taste for, they'll cast you. And if it's not, you did your best. That's all you could do. And it's a volume game. More auditions, That's more auditions, good. more meetings. And so, um, yeah, it's just like once you stop caring, not like you are disrespecting the project or the casting process, but when you just kind of let go of that intense limiting care on yourself yeah, absolutely. of acting or of anything. It's just, it just liberates you to bring what's actually going to make you noticeable. That's good. So, and powerful in the content you're stepping into. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. There's a story that comes to mind for me. Um, when I first moved to Texas, we, I, I got into sales and I started working for this company and they began training me on how to do sales. Okay. I'd never done sales before. I mean, I did sales for my own, for my own company back in Ohio, but I didn't consider it a, like a full on sales role. I was selling every day, but I, I didn't do it in a traditional way. Like, like I did it over the phone. So I didn't actually have to face people. I didn't actually have to present myself a certain way, you know, body language, all of that. And uh, that's something I'd love to get into more as well, body okay. language. But but I'm sharing this story because, uh, like, I was reminded by, by what you said, just being yourself. This company was training me to be a character in the sales department. Yeah. Like, they wanted me to be a certain way in the way that they sell and it was so uncomfortable yeah dude. it was horrible yeah i would i would walk up to a, a customer a potential customer and i couldn't get a word out yeah or i would say something ridiculous and i'm like what in the world is going on with me like and finally the trainer that was training me in which was actually the boss of the company was training me finally i told him just Let's just take a pause, and this is after a few days, maybe even a few weeks. I said, I'm just going to go out in the field myself and do this myself. And, dude, I went out, and, I'm, and I came up with my own line. Yeah. And, and I got on. Uh, I mean, I started getting sales. I Sale bet. after sale. Come on. And I'm like, dude, this works. Like, yes. this finally works, and it feels What's cool good. is, it. yes, your way works, not the way they wrote it for you to be, not yeah. the way they think it should be. It's like your way is what worked, and it was the way that was supposed to work. And yeah. I'm not surprised you started raking in the sales and that it felt good, like you just said. I could yeah. see it in your face. It, it feels good also as an actor to know that you're breaking everyone's expectations, but it's exactly what the character would do and is exactly mm. what would serve the scene the best too. Yeah. I get what you're talking about. And that's so cool that you had a similar experience. Yeah. What, how did you learn body language? Cause that's something that, <laughs> uh, as you know, as I was learning how to sell, I realized like body language really matters a lot. Uh, so I've, I haven't done any deep dives specifically in body language because usually in a scene as an actor, whatever happens, whatever you're feeling emotionally, your body responds to. And for oh, a scene's yeah. purpose, that is the body language you should have. So if you're, if you're sad about something and you're like, you stay in your frame if it's a close up, but you, so you just micro modify. Um, so you stay in frame or whatever, but so as an actor, I don't actually need to learn, uh, know a lot of like body language. I think that's super important say for, for sales or something, um, or 
um, like we, what I've learned about body language is it's like it's important when you're presenting yourself to people, to men, to girls mm. you want to date. Um, oh, the first time I ever experienced yeah. the benefits of body language, I was 18. I was walking around the University of North Texas campus and I just saw this YouTube video about like military posture where you like you would do this thing where you um, reset your posture Bring your shoulders up, bring it back, drop them. Mm. And um, it's supposed to stick your chest out, shoulders back. And I would train myself like daily walking around campus doing that. And this girl that I, I at that time didn't know liked me as much as she did, we started uh, talking and hanging yeah. out. And I was like, I was like, uh, Heather, why do you? Uh, like why I just wanted to know like what made you interested in me and she said it's the way you carry yourself oh wow I knew I was <laughs> handsome I knew I like I worked out I played sports I I took care of my health and all this and I was good in conversation yeah. but I was just like the only thing I changed was just like I guess the way I presented myself mm -hmm. physically with my stature and my posture so posture is super important um and how you come across and so that was cool. It's just like if you, even in groups of men, um, you know how yes. men vie yes. for position yeah, and to appear as the one who has status or the most status. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just uh, body language, posture modifications can, you know, just standing up straight and keeping planted on both feet. Um, there's a lot of videos and books people can read on that. But yeah. um, I don't know, like, what do you think? What's your experience with body language? And where it applies. I mean, I, I'll just tell you my experience of meeting you, like okay. meeting you and seeing, like, all the all of the, uh, our friends in the group. I feel like everybody is like super inviting. Yeah, and they're they're very authentic, real. Um, they're not ego driven. I I don't think there's any one person in there that was like just ego driven, and so. I mean, I come from a background, though, that us men, we don't tell each other we love each other, which right. okay. is is kind of the start of, like, opening yourself up, right, and being a little bit more vulnerable, and then... I remember this. Yes. <laughs> I remember you said, I think you had, you had told, Enos had told us that in the group, like, he wasn't used to being uh, told, I love you by other men, and, like, in Christian culture in family culture it's like everyone says that they love each other yeah it's like your mom tells you i love you your dad says i love you um and so like that that expression is obviously common and to hear that it wasn't common i was like man this is this is i've not heard this before and so yeah. it so you yeah. started to experience that with us where we would like express love and gratitude for each other as brothers in this group yes yes and I, at first honestly i thought it was really weird because you guys would tell me I love you, Enos. And I'd be like, yeah, we'll see you next week. <laughs> I remember that. You wouldn't say it back yet. <laughs> and, uh, and that was just, it felt, it felt great mm -hmm. because it felt authentic, but yeah. it, it made me uncomfortable because I'm like, we don't say that like ever, you know, my yeah. dad never said that to me. I don't know that my mom ever said that to me until I was, you know, a grown adult yeah. out of the house. But uh, but that's like the beginning. And then, yeah. and then the other thing I think was like watching you, um, I could tell like you, you come across as a warm person ben. when you, when you walk up to someone and that's something, ben. I mean, in the Amish culture, we, we walk up to someone and it's a lot of this because okay. Amish are they're taught to close off okay. without even realizing it. I mean, it's just, it's a part of the culture. And so you will find very few Amish men that are completely open and expressing themselves in a, in a more natural way. What I believe to be a more natural way. If you yeah. grew up in a healthy environment and some people might say, well, what, what's a healthy environment? I mean, I guess an environment where you deal with, tough issues in life yeah. and you talk about them uh, most of the most of the people in our culture they don't you know they 
they sweep things under the rug. They don't, you don't talk about certain things okay. within the family. And I just remember <clears throat> being in the group, we talked about certain things and you were like, yeah, we, we talked about that stuff, uh, within our family. I'm like, uh, we did not talk about, you know, we didn't talk about certain topics within our family ever. And it was just something that the Amish don't do. And I think that has a lot to do with body language. I guess okay. that, that's what I'm getting at. Because, gotcha. because naturally, we begin to close off. Do you feel like when <clears throat> we were doing our uh, Bible men's group study that you were emulating those postures, that you were doing that? I don't recall. Because I was just like, man, this guy's really smiling and happy all the time. Yeah. He's always on time. That's great. I... Um, I mean, I do take commitments very seriously, so like yeah. uh, that is some that is a positive that comes out of the Amish cultures. We take commitments. I very could tell because you guys work really hard. Um, well, to my mind, let me just interject and say, yeah. man, like it's so stupid how culture can make um, people deviate from normal and healthy behaviors. Mm. Um, like, there's no there's when is it good to be like closed off and when was that ever a good thing to teach and there's a lot of like wrong teachings even in christian culture too yeah yeah it doesn't matter to go through all that right now but um i think that's just also a journey of self-discovery as you age and mature and like i mean that's essentially what i'm talking about how i grew as an actor and you're talking yeah. about body language yeah. things you notice that weren't working that then you modified and now things are working in a different way because you modified um, or yeah. changed your paradigm about what it looks like to be from someone with your background, what it looks like to be a Christian or something. Yeah. 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 I think, I think too, it, it does shift as you get older yeah. and as you mature. And I, I began working on some of those things before I came to Texas. Okay. But I have learned a lot from the people that I've, hung out with here in texas because it's just it's completely outside of the culture um <clears throat> and you know when you when you leave the amish and you're around the the you're still around the culture you don't really yeah. get the full experience of what it's like what would it be like if if you went to a different country and maybe you have you know you went to a different country yeah and you're not around any of your family. Like right. they do things differently there. So yeah. uh, you just learn how they do things and you take some of the good that they do and you apply it to your life. And so that was my experience leaving the Amish and moving to Texas. Yeah. Because for the first time in my entire life, I wasn't around any former Amish people. Okay. So... It gave me an opportunity to grow big time. It's good. <laughs> and get out of my comfort zone. Dude, I can tell. Um, I mean, even just you starting this podcast is like a, a massive growth moment for you yes, in life personally. Because again, we've been talking about a podcast. Um, like you wanted to start one back in 2019. I was talking about starting one. Um, yes. And now you've actually begun yours. And so I can tell even in the last four or five years, um, some good shifts in you in your life and yeah man. and becoming a dad has made a big difference as well Bad. i am so excited for you to become a dad yeah dude at some point in your life yeah sometime in the near future <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm thinking within the next five or six yeah. years or something so it's it's like a real <clears throat> I, I i don't think it's talked about enough what okay what an honor and what a joy it is to be a dad to be a father and you know, you got to have at least, a, you got to have one boy, you got to have one son, you yeah. got to have at least one girl. Yeah, man. There's dads out there, you you girl dads, you you don't want a son, I'm, I'm telling you, you got to have at least one of each, uh, uh, a son and a daughter, because yeah. they both bring something to the family that's, uh, it's just, I don't know, I have, I have some awesome moments with my sons and then i have some really cool moments with my daughters like taking yeah. them on dates and just allowing Man. them to be girls so, yeah 
That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm an uncle. I don't know what it's like to be a dad, of course, yet, but I'm excited. Everyone, every man always says it changes him when he has kids. Um, for the better, of course. It's like the character change that occurs in you is immense. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm excited for you. Yeah. Being an uncle is a lot of fun, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the fun without time. all the responsibility in <laughs> yeah. some regards. Yeah, so. definitely enjoy that time. Cause yeah. But where can people find you? And how do you say your last name? Uh, my name is Michael Fjordbach. Um, you can find me right now basically just on Instagram, at real Michael Fjordbach. Someone took my name um, before I got on Instagram, so I had to put real in front of my mm, handle. For real? For real, yes. Wow. Uh, so I thought of this cool, a this acting exercise that I thought we could try together. It's easy. Okay. Uh, so one thing that that they will teach you early on um, is like vulnerability. I had a class just on vulnerability, and I was like, what does that mean? And I still don't know what they meant when they said that. But um, it's, of course, super important to be able to access your emotions. Yes. Um, and so I think I might have done this in the class, and it's, it's really fun. It goes to show you that, and this is in relationships too, it's not necessarily what you're saying, but how you say it. And mm -hmm. in a scene, you're given lines, but what's more important is, is that your lines are coming out of you feeling something about what's oh. happening or about the person. Um, and that's what lights you up emotionally. So that's why a line can come out 100 different ways because your emotions oh, are okay. infinite in its concoction of togetherness of different emotions. Yeah. And so um, the exercise is um, essentially to say something, but you're just going to say the ABCs and it's going to start somewhere and then finish somewhere for example um I, we'll just make this up this up on the spot okay. so all right um i'll do the first one um it could be a a fake scene sort of like where i have to tell you that i'm i've been holding back from saying this for 10 years and i've wanted to say this one thing to you for 10 years and and so then you just go from A to Z, and like by the time you hit X, for example, you're letting that person, your scene partner, know that that you mean business. And so um, it's a cool exercise to just test your emotions out with no weight of the responsibility of knowing lines. And so let's just try it, and then I'll give you a scene to do. And it could be heavy, it could be light, it could be fun, okay. it could be about love. All right. I'll I think love love related ones. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just try this. Tell me if I get out of frame, but I'm gonna get a little closer to you because I love. Just this is my love of bodied language when I act is like I like to react off the person. So I'm going to tell you basically I'll say what I'm actually going to say. Oh, I'll, I'm going to say right now what I'm not going to say. Okay, so Enos or it could be dad. It could be old friend. So let's say old friend. Um, Yeah, when we were kids, uh, you used to really do some mean things to me. And uh, it affected me this way, this way, and this way. And look, I'm so mad and I don't think we can ever talk again. So I'm going to do that and see what emotions come up for me, mm. A through Z. Okay, are you ready? Wow. Yeah, I'm ready. Bring it on. Levina, say action. Action. A. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, Z.
Great, that was fun. <laughs> was that cool? <laughs> um, Levina looks like she was entertained by that. <laughs> so, anyways, what's cool is just like you can say it, space it out how you want to space it out, and it allows you to feel like, and you can do that exact scene yeah. ten different times. So, let's give Enos something he can say to me. It could be like, um, maybe we make it a little lighter, happier. It's like. I can do the happy scene. Okay, here's a happy scene for Enos. <laughs> I can do that. Um, you scene. just, you haven't seen me in like 10 years, but I, I did something for you that was so incredible to your life. And so maybe you like recognize me mm. and then you're just like, hey, I have to just tell you this and like, thank you so much. So maybe you end on like mm. gratitude. Yeah? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I clear? So, <laughs> so it's, uh, so it's starting at A through Z. Yeah, just A, B, C, all the way down. You pace it how you want to pace it. But just in your mind, imagine what you're saying in English, but don't worry too much about saying anything except the alphabet, but feel the emotions. Ooh, that's going deep. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, it's, it's, so just so I understand what I'm the part that I'm playing, I'm playing, <clears throat> I'm playing the emotion uh, by using the letters A through Z. Z. Yeah. And that comes out by me imagining where yes. I'm at in the scene. Yes. Right? So yeah. I, it, it, okay. It's, it's not the easiest thing to kind of say something separate from what you're thinking, but that's, one way you can access so, sort of freedom yeah. in a scene yeah. from what it should be so it doesn't have to last as long as mine lasts it could be five seconds if you just run through the whole thing as long as the point is just feel something yeah whatever it is so a b b yeah. C E F G H I J K N M O P I forgot the ABCs. Q R S. Dude, it's it can pull you out of it. It's hard. Oh, it's not easy. I almost I messed up my mind too. I was like, wait, I am I at that. am like, I at M or that, that, Yeah. That is crazy. Wow. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never experienced that. Like just the emotion. Because it's almost like you're imagining you're in that scene. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're, it's like, dude, if I haven't seen you in 10 years, like, yeah, it's a joyful moment. Yeah. But it's also emotional. Yeah. In some regards, it's easier to have, I guess, words you've memorized in a scene and because it will naturally flow. Yeah. But, so it's obviously not, it's a bit of a tricky exercise, but it's really fun when you can access your emotions yeah. and realize how you're saying something without being worried about being off book or being right on the line. Yeah. And that's why I like that. So, man, that was cool. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's definitely going to help me because it's it's like you imagine things, but you mm -hmm. don't think about necessarily, or I don't always think about attaching an emotion to it. Yeah. Like, cause, but that's what it is. I mean, yeah. if you allow yourself to go there. And obviously, obviously, you have previous times that you've done that. That you you can you kind of have a bank of experiences that you can pull from when you're Certainly. going through that exercise. But right, yeah. So it was I, much easier for me, I'm sure. Yeah. It's cool because it um, being an actor, you you try to be off book and get it word for word um, all the time, and that's like a lot of pressure. And 
And it's one of the most beautiful things as an actor is to make a mistake and keep rolling. Mm. And it's like, yeah, that's like real life. Yeah, That's one reason I love doing what I do as an actor. And so doing the alphabet exercise is like just one way to mess up and keep going or, or find something you didn't expect to feel. And um, it also kind of helped me with my pacing also. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you did that perfectly. Thank you. That I have another so idea. Um, <laughs> Levina, how, how old are you? You're 20. Okay. Can she do the exercise? Yes. She okay. Can do the exercise if I have an idea. <laughs> this is great. Um, so, okay, here's another one, and we can try this. We can call it a day after that. Um, I'm going to do one where, um, and maybe we can try the same one, where I I just, I'm in love with you, and I, I don't exactly know how to say it, but I'm going to confess my love for you, mm-hmm. and that'll be my scene, okay? Okay. And then maybe you can try it, so I'll just, Enos... <laughs> Um, do you have anything to add to that scene? <laughs> what would make it interesting? Uh, well, no, I think you got it. How long has it been since I've been waiting to tell her I love her? Um, oh, man. It's been at least three years. Oh, my gosh. And, and what's, what's happening in her life that makes it high stakes? That I have to tell her now. Questioning whether you love her. Okay. She's been waiting, but she's tired of waiting. Oh, like, bro, yeah. I love this. Okay. <laughs> she's tired of waiting. High stakes make yeah. scenes juicy. Okay. Yeah. She's tired of waiting, and it's been three years. And for me, I've just been nervous because I actually do love you. So, uh, A, uh, B, <laughs> C. D uh, E F and G and E um H uh, I J K L M N O P uh yeah Q R S T U V T U V. So W X Y Z. That felt okay. That was. <laughs> that was awesome. That is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> I'm just realizing how complicated this exercise is. Jeez, because I'm like picturing in English what I'm saying while having to literally say just the alphabet. Yeah. But it's kind of fun when you get the hang of it. Because um, it, it allows you to access a vulnerability without knowing, without saying something that might make you feel like you said something wrong. So anyway, that was, that was fun. Oh so why don't you try it? Let's give her a scene. So Okay, this better be easy because... Okay. I almost messed up while you were. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So same scene for you. Look, um, I we've been um, we've been flirting with each other for for like a good six months. I'm about to move to a different city, or I could stay here, and I need a reason to stay here. And I just need to know how you feel about me. And if you don't tell me today, I've got my eyes set somewhere else. But I like you. So convince me to stay. Tell me whatever you need to tell me right now to convince me to stay. A. B. C. D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z 
That was great. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you. That was so I cool. Felt like Way to go. The ABC should be like twice as long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm selling a whole story. There's not enough ABCs. To I know. It's like you could. I was thinking you should double the ABCs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and of course, scenes rarely last 30 seconds like that did. Usually they're like mm -hmm. five minutes or something. But. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's why it also helped me with pacing. It's like, oh God, scene's about yeah, to end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's what's beautiful is you realized I need more time to talk yeah, to you. Yeah. Anyways, like, I thought that was super cool. Way to go. So, awesome. Enos, uh, Levina, that was great. Way to go. Both of you guys, I'm proud of you. That took courage. <laughs> yeah, the ABC's movie what is, what is starring Levina, Enos, Michael. Why is he saying the ABCs in the middle of that movie? <laughs> now we know. Yeah. It could be like a couple's therapy exercise because yeah. it's like how you say something matters just as much, if not more, than what you're saying. Oh, I yeah. think they both matter. But uh... Well, and, <laughs> and it's also a, a deeper emotional connection with yourself and really exactly. with the other person. The other person, yeah. and that's what makes... Good scenes, good too, is when you're listening to the other person. Um, yeah. So being connected and listening is where the beauty comes out when you're an actor too. So you're right. Yeah. I agree. Listening. Dude, bro. thank you for doing that. I was not expecting Dude, I, I, I didn't know if I was going to include that, but I'm, I guess it was worth it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's cool. It was cool. definitely <laughs> worth it. Um, awesome. I, I'm sure the audience is going to love it. <clears throat> and I know that I'm going to be trying that with my wife and hopefully Dude, yeah spark, that'd be awesome spark some more romantic romance in my relationship yeah man <laughs> you know what's cool though too is like without it shows you that without words you can make an impact on yeah. somebody even just by doing yeah. a fun little exercise with them and that's what improv classes too i love improv classes but it's um i guess we can, we can wrap up here but i just what you just said was just really Maybe it could spark some fresh romance to do something like. Maybe it could change a relationship or something to discover through something like that exercise. And yeah. so, because um, as an actor, you realize when someone else says something to you, it will make you feel something that wasn't written, that you didn't expect. Mm. And that makes you want to respond in a very organic way. Yeah. And that's where the beauty comes from. Yeah. That's great. Bro. That's awesome. Thank you for that piece. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. Thanks I for having you, me. Bro. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's glad awesome. you can say it yeah. freely. I can, I can say it freely. Man. And I've, I've definitely been blessed to be able to say that to my sons and, yeah. and my daughters. I'll tell you one thing, man. You are an Amish rebel. I'm an Amish rebel. And I guess yeah. I am too now. Yes, yes. You're officially an Amish rebel. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well. Maybe someday we need to take a trip back to the Amish community. Yeah, man. I'll inter uh, people do that. Yeah. To break away from the hecticness of society. So we yeah. could do that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Look, maybe we do a part two, part three down the line. We'll see how it goes. Yes. So, please um, comment. Like the video. Try the exercise like, with your friends. Yes, try the <laughs> try the, the exercise and uh, let us know what you liked about this episode and what we could do better because we love your feedback and we want to make this podcast mm -hmm. the greatest podcast on YouTube. Oh yeah, let's go for it! And I'm We're excited for you. I'm excited for Thank the movie you. that's coming out. Amen. Go check out Michael's movie and support him in that. And also hit him up on Instagram. Yes, sir. We'll see you in the next video.